What's up, church? How y'all doing? We are in James 4, 13 through 17. I hope you've really been enjoying this entire 30-day challenge. We've been having water. How's it been without coffee? Can I just ask you? Mm, put in the comments below how your life is without coffee. Come on, put them in the comments right now. Okay. Uh, James 4, 13 through 17. I know some people are struggling, but God is with you. Hallelujah. James 4, 13 through 17. We got an incredible group of scriptures here. I talk about this group of scriptures all the time. It comes into so many of the messages that I find that I preach and just it's changed my life personally. Let's get reading. Here we go. Verse 13. You look here, you, you who say this, Today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and we will stay there a year. We will do business there or we will do this and we'll make a profit. How do you know what your life is going to be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while and then it's gone. What you ought to say is this. If the Lord wants us to, we will live there. We will do this. We will do that. Otherwise, you're just boasting about your own pretentious plans and all such boasting is evil. Verse 17. This one's so good. It's just on the bottom, but it's like amazing. Remember, it is a sin to know what to do what you ought to do, and then not do it. It's a sin to know what you ought to do, and then not do it. All right, let's get into this. Okay, let's start by saying this. Ownership is a myth. Ownership is a myth. If you're a believer and a Christian, ownership is a myth. Let me explain. As a Christian and a believer, God owns everything. Let's start there. The Bible says that God owns all the silver and gold. That's Haggai. The Bible says that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The Bible says in Psalms, the earth is the Lord in the fullness thereof. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that you don't even belong to yourself. Your body actually isn't your own. The Bible says that everyone who is in the world belongs to God. Okay, so if you got all the gold belonging to God, all the land belongs to God, you belong to God, and everybody that you know belongs to God, then what actually belongs to you? Let me tell you. God tells us the only things as a believer you have the right to own are the promises He gives you. I'm going to say that again. The only thing as a believer you have the right to own and claim ownership of are the promises God gives you. And you better take hold of those. You better own those. You know, there's over 7,000 of them in the Bible. 7,000 of these beautiful promises. And you see what the Bible says is all of the promises in Jesus are yes and amen. So, yes, it comes from Jesus is the moment he said it from the Father. Or the moment we read it from Scripture, it's a yes from God. The amen is when we actually see the full results of the promise fulfilled so a lot of people are in this place of an and season. Yes and amen. God says yes and amen. They're waiting. They're in that and season. The result, the processes of the promise are still coming to pass. Some of you are still waiting on promises that you know God's spoken. Maybe about your kids or about your business, whatever it might be. But the promises are yes and we will say by faith amen because we're going to see the total results. In Jesus, all of those 7,000 plus promises are ours. But listen to what James is trying to say here. You don't have ownership of anything, even your time, even your schedule. And this specifically is addressing people who are like, yeah, man, you know, um, I'm going to head over here and we're going to have a great time and vacation over there for three months. And then we're going to do this. And you know anybody like this who's like, yeah, you know, we got our five year plan. Our five year plan is going to be boop, 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 boop. What are you talking about? Five year plan. If you're walking with the Holy Ghost, he doesn't give you a five year plan. What are you talking about? That's from books. That's from, you know, the world, business, whatever. But if you're a follower of the Holy Spirit, he tells you the next step. He just tells you the next step. Peter, if that's you, Lord, come out. If that's you, Lord, call me to come out on the water. Come. Uh, is there anything else? I'm about to walk on water here. Are you going to give me any instructions? I'm about to walk on H2O. I usually drowned in this stuff. Like, are you going to tell me anything else, Jesus? Come. That's it? Yeah. That's how he is. He tells you the next step. Once you obey the next step, he'll tell you the next step. Once you obey the last thing he said, he tells you the next thing. Let me say it again. Once you obey the last thing he said, he tells you the next thing. 
So let's think about this. You have no ownership of your time. Your time belongs to God. So how could we be saying, and he calls it pretentious, another version of the Bible calls it evil. It is evil to say, we're going to go do something, assuming that God is okay with your plans. Y'all, trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Who's the director? Is it you or the Holy Ghost? I want to challenge everybody who's listening to this right now. Who is the director of your life? You say it's Jesus. You say, Lord, have my life. We sing it. We praise. But guys, like, when's the last time you took the plans you were about to have and you looked at your schedule, the job you work, the way that you're raising your kids, the things you're doing in your business, the goals you're setting for yourself, for your health, for your life, and ran it by the Holy Ghost? Said, hey, I have a plan. Because Proverbs does say, a man has a plan in his heart, but the Lord orders his steps. A man makes a plan. It is your job to make a plan. But then you got to run the plan by the Holy Ghost and say, Lord, is there anything you want to change? You got to be flexible with the plan. One of my favorite scriptures in the book of Psalms as well said, uh, it is the book of Proverbs. It said that the king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. And he turns it as the water courses, whichever way he wants to. The king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. And as the water in rivers, he's able to turn it. He's able to direct that heart, the Lord is, wherever way he wants it to go. You see, it's flexible, it's malleable. God can change things, he can shift things. You are acting no more like a king. The time that you're acting the most like who you are, which is a king and a queen in God, a royal priesthood is what God calls you. The time you're acting the most like it is when you are the most leadable. The time you're acting the most like royalty, the time you're acting the most in your authority is when you're the most leadable. How do I know that? Well, Romans says this, Romans chapter 8. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. That word sons means mature. It's in the mature tense. It's a maturing tense. It's those who are led by the Spirit of God are the mature sons and daughters of God. Mature. That means that maturity does not happen because you've been a Christian for 40 years. Therefore, you're more mature. It has nothing to do with how long you've been a Christian. If you haven't been leadable by the Holy Ghost that whole time, you have not matured. You're still a baby in the faith and in the spirit because the only way you mature in Christianity is you are led by the Holy Ghost. Listen, guys, we cannot say and claim things of our own. Do you know that your children are not yours? Do you know that? They don't belong to you. You birthed them. You're raising them as good stewards of God's kids. Do you know your wife or your husband doesn't belong to you? I know they have a ring on their finger. But the ring on their finger is to tell the rest of the world that they are not available. But it's not saying that to God. She's God's daughter before she's your wife. He's God's son before he's your husband. Wow. Y'all, let's go back to the Holy Ghost and be leadable. Last thing before we end right here. Verse 17. It is sin to know what you ought to do and then you don't do it. Listen, y'all, maybe as you've been listening today and something maybe has reached out in your heart and you're like, man, I got to go back to the Lord. If the Holy Spirit spoke to you, now you know what you ought to do. You hear me? When the Holy Spirit convicts you, you know now what you ought to do. So it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Let's follow through. Let's say, you know what? The moment I hang this phone up or the moment I stop this devotion, I'm going to do what God just told me to do. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to procrastinate, right? Because delayed obedience is still disobedience. But let's get the blessings. Good things are coming for you. The best days are ahead when you're a person who is leadable by the Holy Ghost. Are you a leadable person or have you been leading the way? That's our question for today. But I want you to know, when you want to be led by the Holy Ghost, nothing will stop your growth. Nothing will stop the promises from coming. And everything that those promises say will come to pass in your life. Because you know what we do get to own? Every promise He's told us. I hope you've been blessed today. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Hope this devotion has really encouraged you and strengthened you. Share it with somebody who needs to hear it. God bless you.